Okay, good. Uh, good evening, everyone. Energy sources are a very hot topic and a very important topic. That's the webinar for today. And I hand over the proceedings to our MOC of the evening, uh, Dr. Riddhi Narang. Dr. Riddhi, please. Riddhi, ma'am, please unmute yourself. Thank you, Punita, ma'am. Hello, everyone. Uh, I would like to invite uh, Dr. Kanika Jain. Uh, she's senior consultant, endoscopist at Sir Gangaram Hospital, and she presently she is chairperson of endoscopy committee AOGD to deliver the welcome note. Welcome, ma'am. Thank you, Riddhi. Uh, thanks a lot. And uh, it's my honor, my privilege to be uh, uh, inviting, uh, rather just introducing uh, Dr. Chandra and uh, Dr. Punita, who have very uh, nicely woven this uh, very interesting webinar on a dry topic, but they've made it really interesting. And uh, I'm sure the audience is going to benefit a lot from this. And uh, this is one of the uh, basic uh, series of our uh, webinars of the Endoscopy Committee. So on behalf of uh, AOGD Endoscopy Committee, I welcome you all. And uh, over to you again, uh, Riddhi. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, I'd like to invite our guest, uh, Dr. Mahal Ma'am is a public body. She is Chief Department of Ops and Health of IHG. Ma'am, please join us and we welcome you. Thank you very much, um, Dr. Riddhi, Dr. Punita, Dr. Chandra Bansukhani, Dr. Kanika. I think it's a very, very, very important topic. Even Kanika, though it is dry, but I think it is extremely important if we were to excel and we have to command over our laparoscopic surgery. It's very true, ma'am, very true. It, very true. It, uh, it is so important to command the skills of using correctly the energy sources which are available to us. And because of them, our spectrum of surgical uh, procedures has really widened. And as it does so, it's very important to understand the newer modalities which are being brought platter to us. But we cannot use it unless we understand all that. And hence the webinar. I think it's a, it's a wonderful topic to be covered today because, uh, of course, it's the duty of the person who is giving us when we purchase any kind of modality it's our duty to understand what it's all about to give it and use it safely for the patient and for your own self not only understand the way to use it the the complications and what are the risks involved everything should be understood by the whole team i would say even the theater staff the care of all these instruments it's so important so yes. i'm really the deliberations for today Thank you very much for honoring me by making me this, giving me this very beautiful post. I must thank you, Punita. Thank you, Chanda and uh, Kanika, all of you. So we can, I will not waste further time. Riddhi? Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Uh, now I'll invite our chief guest for today. Uh, Dr. Achra Butter. Uh, she's professor at Savdajan Hospital and presently president of AOGD. Welcome you, ma'am. Uh, thank you, Riddhi. I think uh, I welcome all of you on behalf of AOGD also to this wonderful webinar because I think the first thing one should know when one is starting endoscopic surgery is about the energy sources, because if you don't use the correct source where it is required, you know, there are so many, you might have a bipolar, you might have a harmonic, you might even have a thunderbolt, but where bipolar is required, you'll have to use that only. And uh, what complications can be there, which one to use, how to use, and like Malvikla correctly said, how to take care of them. All are equally important, and uh, I think they should be the, one of the first lessons one learns when one is learning endoscopy. And Kanika, as usual, has you know been doing wonderful uh, these uh, master classes on endoscopy, and I'm sure it is benefiting a lot of people to know the basics of all the aspects of endoscopy. So 
So this is another one in the series and uh, uh, everybody is going to benefit from it. Uh, and uh, Punita and Chandra, they, they are the right people to do it. Punita has been doing endoscopic surgery from ages, you know, I always keep sending her my patient. I have so much faith in her. So um, this webinar, uh, uh, I wish this webinar a great success. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, now, coming to our discussions, I would like to invite uh, our discussant for the first topic, that is ultrasonic devices, the cutting edge. I'll invite uh, Dr. Vidya Bhatt. She's a renowned gynecologist from Bangalore and doing great work in her field. I welcome you, ma'am. Ma'am has not joined yet. Yes, Dr. Vidya has joined. No, ma'am. Uh, Dr. Vidya is not there. Okay, Dr. Don't worry. You invite. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Invite the other discussion. Yes, ma'am. And we have Dr. Angela Aneja. She's a senior consultant and director at Fortis Memorial Hospital, Gurgaon. Welcome you, ma'am. Thank you, Riddhi. Thank you so much. And now I'd like to invite uh, Dr. Alka Sina. Uh, she's our speaker for the topic. And uh, ma'am is a senior consultant and co-director for endoscopy training, and training at BLK Hospital. Uh, good evening, everyone. I hope I'm audible. Yes, you're audible. That's yes, you're audible. Yeah. Okay, so we will just go on to our topic. <clears throat> so, uh, Whenever we uh, look back on uh, the day-to-day -day surgeries which we do, uh, most of them would be using some energy device or the other. And as Dr. Malvika and Dr. Achla they, uh, said, uh, you know, the safety of these surgeries depends not only on the skill as a surgeon, but also on a working knowledge of the energy source which we are using. So it's very important that if there are any gaps in the knowledge, they need to be filled so that we can ensure a safe and safe surgery using these energy devices uh, in the optimal manner so that we choose the best device to be used for in that particular situation and use it in the correct way. <clears throat> Coming to the topic uh, for today, ultrasonic surgical devices. So how do they work? Basically, electrical energy is converted into ultrasonic energy, and then this is delivered as mechanical energy at the active blade. So there's a machine and a handpiece. The transducer in the handpiece consists of piezoelectric crystals, which generate the ultrasonic vibrations. And then this is delivered as a high grade frictional force at the active blade. While the other blade, the inactive blade holds the tissue in a position applying pressure. So this is the basic principle of all the ultrasonic shears which are available. So uh, the actions of these shears are cutting, coagulation and dissection. So let's understand how each one occurs. So there's a longitudinal vibration of the active blade with a frequency of between 20 to 60 kilohertz. The harmonic, for example, is 55 kilohertz. Due to this vibration, there is protein denaturation caused by destroying the hydrogen bonds in the proteins. And 
this is due to the internal cellular friction and by the generation of heat in the vibrating tissue. During the time of coagulation, the lateral spread of energy uh, by these devices is very minimal. Cutting of the tissues is uh, by either of two mechanisms. For those tissues with high protein density, for example, muscle, the saw mechanism of the vibrating blade is itself sufficient for cutting. For other tissues with low protein density, cavitation effect, that is the intracellular water is vaporized due to the vibration. This leads to cell rupture and this leads to cutting of the tissue. Dissection again, vibration and intracellular generation of vacuoles as we discussed. Uh, most of these devices have different power levels, which we can adjust to achieve a balance between coagulation and cutting. For example, in the harmonic, as we increase the power setting, there's increased cutting speed and less coagulation. So that can be adjusted according to the surgery, which we are doing. The advantages of using these ultrasonic surgical devices is they provide excellent hemostasis, efficient and precise transaction of the tissues, minimal lateral thermal damage, less charring, desiccation, and tissue sticking to the jaws of the forceps. There's no risk of electrical current passage to the patient, and there's less smoke generation as compared to the traditional electrosurgical uh, devices. However, fine mist is produced and that sometimes interferes with the visibility, but it dissipates much faster than the smoke plume produced by the other instruments. Now, what is most important is the reduced lateral thermal damage. This translates into less inflammation, faster wound healing, and less post-operative adhesions for the patient. For the surgeon, it allows a safer and precise dissection near the vital structures. What is important to us when we are doing surgeries like hysterectomy is the vessel sealing effect. So the sealing of the vessels is achieved again due to a formation of a denatured protein coagulum due to tamponade and coaptation of the vessel walls. Blood vessels up to two to three millimeter in diameter are coagulated just by contact of the tissue with the vibrating metal. However, for coagulation of larger vessels, exertion of pressure is required as well as precise modulation of the energy time and delivery as we'll discuss in the later slides. So for most of us, our, uh, the first ultrasonic dissection device which we would have used would be the harmonic A shears. And uh, this had a vessel indication up to five millimeter. Uh, this was quite good for day-to-day -day surgery. However, if uh, the vessel sealing was less than the um, advanced bipolar instruments, which had become available, for example, Legasure, Gyrus, and all. <clears throat> Even though there's very less uh, thermal damage, however, there are safety issues because what happens is that the temperature rises significantly at the tip of the instrument. And that's, this can be above the threshold for uh, cell kill. So inadvertently, if we touch any uh, organ uh, with the tip of the forceps, it can lead to ischemia. Uh, we have to remember that there's a device cooling time. Uh, by what time it cools off sufficient to uh, obviate any injury due to the heated tip. So uh, adaptive tissue technology was something new which came into these instruments and this increased the safety profile. So what happens is this adaptive tissue technology actively monitors the instrument during use and enables the system to respond intelligently to varying tissue conditions. So what happens is as the tissue gets transected, the blades uh, come in opposition and the temperature rises. So this allows a feedback and uh, because of this, the temperature will not rise anymore and 
uh, this will enable more precise en energy delivery and improve temperature management to significantly reduce the uh, temperature at the tip. So this was the advantage in the harmonic ACE uh, plus. Uh, because the vessel sealing was only up to five millimeter, that was a drawback. Uh, the Ethicon harmonic uh, solved it by bringing out the harmonic ACE plus seven, which had an advanced hemostasis mode with a vessel indication of up to seven millimeter. Uh, because it was seven millimeter, that uh, made, this made it comparable to the other advanced bipolar uh, devices and the vessel sealing achieved by those devices while having the benefit of the ultrasonic dissection also. Coming to some of the other devices, uh, the Thunderbeat by Olympus was perhaps the first advanced energy system which delivered both bipolar and ultrasonic energy. Uh, the seal and cut mode, the purple button, delivers advanced bipolar and ultrasonic energy simultaneously, thus uh, doing a very efficient uh, uh, sealing and cutting. Whereas the blue button, the seal mode, delivered just advanced bipolar and energy without the cut effects of ultrasonic energy. It also had an in, inbuilt intelligent tissue monitoring uh, system, which detects the change in pressure on the probe. So as the tissue transects, the pressure is relieved and this leads to a auto stop function. So this ultrasonic delivery of the ultrasonic energy is stopped and this helps in uh, you know, controlling the temperature at the tip of the instrument. And also because it avoids overheating, there'll also be enhanced instrument durability. So the seal mode is very good for controlling of oozing or secondary hemostasis. It is also good for pre-sealing. You can coagulate the vessel before sealing and cutting it. It is a versatile instrument, both bipolar as well as ultrasonic energy. So there's less instrument change. So that uh, this uh, is uh, different and good Oh. The other surgical systems also, for example, Lotus had a ubersonic marvel, which was almost same like the Thunderbeat. They have minor differences, but more or less the principles which we have to understand are the same. Something which is uh, different is the Sony session by the Medtronic company. So this is a cordless ultrasonic vessel sealing system. So as there's no cord, there's freedom of movement in the operating room. You can pass the instrument from one side to the other without getting all tied up in the cables. There's an intuitive dual mode energy activation control, which offers minimum and maximum power modes within one button itself. So there's easy transition between energy modes. There's a reusable handheld generator. So that is, again, they say it lasts for much longer. Uh, so now we have understood how these work, what are the different uh, types of instruments which are available. So let's go from theory to practical. So uh, this is a patient with abnormal uterine bleeding yeah. with one previous cesarean section, and we are doing the TLH with the harmonic. So as you can see, it's achieving quite good cooking and cutting and uh, there's uh, very less blackening and charring. Uh, even though when we are doing a dissection with harmonic, I'd still like to keep a bipolar with me, even though in this patient, we did not require it at all. And as with the newer harmonics, they even achieve vessel seal up to seven millimeter, you'll be uh, quite comfortable uh, doing it. In this patient, there were hardly any adhesions, so it was more or less a clean cut um, hysterectomy. So as you can see, the steps, transection of the pedicles on both sides, opening of the UV fold, dissection of the bladder, there are some adhesions there, but uh, nothing much. And then we go on and transect the 
uh, uterines on both sides. So uh, it uh, is uh, quite a good um, sealing and cutting. There's no backflow or any other leaking from any uh, of the uh, vessels which have been transected. Again, the vascular pedicles on this side, as you can see, they are being taken and uh, it's quite uh, effectively dealing with it. I think after this, the uterosacral and then that's more or less over. Okay, so that was a patient which was absolutely clean. Now here's another indication for the use of the harmonic a uterus, which is literally suspended from the anterior abdominal wall. So over here, harmonic uh, as a dissecting tool has great advantages. There's coagulation and cutting. You can do it with scissors also, but then there would be some bleeding which would obscure the field of vision and make everything so difficult or you can use a bipolar and a cutting but this as an instrument for both dissection coagulation and cutting it really gives you an edge the beauty of laparoscopic surgery is as you can see over here so whenever you open a plane what happens is the pneumoperitoneum the air rushes in and actually makes that uh, very difficult between the loose areolar tissues it goes in and it becomes very easy to uh, go in and dissect so that's the advantage of laparoscopy it becomes very easy because that air actually creates a dissection plane and the harmonic actually helps with that even uh, when you dissect with the harmonic you'll notice that there are those you know bubbling effect is there and it really makes the dissection quite easier over there so we just uh, keep on dissecting uh, and uh, with the dissection uh, slowly, you will be able to identify uh, the anatomy or restore some sort of a normal anatomy. So now the uterus has more or less been separated from the anterior abdominal wall. We just need to dissect in the lower part. Uh, so the harmonic, apart from sharp dissection, even, you know, the jaws of the forceps, when you open the blades, it can act as a, like over here, it can act as a blunt dissecting tool also over here, another help of uh, in such areas and now it's more or less done we just need to dissect the bladder away a little bit and uh, then we can go about doing a uh, normal <clears throat> surgery for the bladder dissection also uh, in previous cesareans this is a wonderful dissecting tool here it was more of abdominal this uh, wall adhesion rather than a bladder adhesion but sometimes they're dense bladder adhesions remember it is just a tool ultimately you have to do the dissection uh, so but it is a uh, big help so now we can see almost all done and we can do the uh, hysterectomy so another use would be when we are uh, developing the pelvic spaces. For example, this is a patient in whom we are doing a hysteropexy. So we need to uh, dissect uh, behind the uterus where we are going to fix the mesh and also over the sacral promontory. Uh, so we need to go in uh, nice and deep so as to fix the mesh properly over there. And can you see it's uh, this dissection is very nice and you know this just all this bubble or champagne effect or whatever you like to call it and uh, it's very efficient uh, you don't you need only one instrument you don't need to change them again now we are dissecting anteriorly so that you know we can just prepare the area over the cervix and uh, once we do this all that is left is just you know uh, putting in the mesh and fixing it obviously the harmonic doesn't have any role in that uh, again uh, dissecting just to show um, previously we were dissecting posteriorly now we are dissecting anteriorly another case of prolapse and here we are going to do a pectopexy much uh, easier to do especially in patients where there's uh, posteriorly there are adhesions or um, it's also much faster so you know again the same way just going on uh, dissecting uh, below the round ligaments and uh, so coagulating and cutting it's very clean there's hardly any blood loss there's not too much of cautery no blackening no charring and uh, all the tissues uh, very easy to see uh, so here we can just uh, go ahead and now what we have to do this, this uh, 
this uh, do the dissection in is this area, this triangle, the obliterated umbilical, the round ligament posteriorly. And here we'll just go and dissect this area and uh, you will find the pectin pubis and we just go on and uh, fix it to that area. Okay, so another use would be, you know, so many cases in which we are using the harmonic, uh, just uh, wanted to share some so that, you know, just see how versatile it can be. So here we have, uh, uh, transected the round ligament quite lateral uh, close to the pelvic wall. This is a case of endometrial CA and we'll be doing the pelvic lymphadenectomy. So uh, just removing the tissues lateral and anterior to the external iliac vessels. So blunt dissection with the forceps and also some sharp dissection in open I used to remember we used to do with uh, open artery forceps and applying monopolar to that, something like that, but much more precise, much more magnified over here. So we just tease out and if there are any attachments uh, which are uh, you know, liable to bleed, we can just um, take away those. So just go on dissecting this area, teasing this fibro fatty tissue away from this area. And uh, as you can see, all these um, tissues have been dissected away, just tease it out. There may be some bleeding, uh, not to worry. Usually just uh, it uh, stops on its own or you can just put a gauze over there. So now this tissue has come off. So we have removed this area. Sorry, my mistake. Okay, I think just <laughs> Alka just click. Yeah, yeah, I know actually that uh, the data, yeah, the toolbar was uh, down, so it was difficult for me. Okay, so now we have dissected this, uh, and now what we need to do is dissect between the two vessels, between the artery and the vein, and take off the tissues from there. So again, we are doing that. And after this, what we need is to dissect the tissue behind the vein. So as we would do in open case, we would uh, you know, retract it with a vein loop. Here we are retracting with another instrument and clearing off this area. Okay, so once we do that, then all that is left is to take off the lymph nodes medially. And here, Again, a little bit of bleeding, just suck it out. It usually does not lead to any problems. Now, what we need to do is dissect above the obturator nerve. That would be the inferior limit of our dissection over here. And we have already identified the ureters on this side. So now we are just taking this off. And uh, so the final picture would be something like uh, this. So uh, all the, the external ALAC vessels over here, the obturator nerve, the obliterated umbilical artery, the ureters over here, and this is it. So all this, uh, just to show that, you know, you cannot do away with the basic electrosurgical uh, devices, the monopolar and the bipolar, they are basically the staple uh, food in our diet. But these ultrasonic devices are maybe the spice which add the zing, the flavor. And uh, with so many instruments available, it's our job to become well-versed with how they work, what are their plus points, what are their drawbacks, what uh, points to take care while we are using this. And they can prove to be a very handy tool in doing more and more difficult and complicated surgeries. Thank you. I had a Thunderbeat video also here, but somehow it's not working. So anyway, uh, uh, if you have it, you can show it to us. Uh, I know Dr. it's not running, it? Dr. Punita. I tried twice. Yeah. I don't know if it has got corrupt or oh, something. Sometimes it do happen like that. But okay, uh, Alka, that's okay. Uh, Alka, it was, I must congratulate you on such a wonderful 
presentation and uh, i wish uh, you know the juniors are also listening to your presentation it was such a crisp and very neat and clean surgery and uh, uh, you know i'm i what you have covered almost everything but i will definitely like to say it's very important for the beginners you know don't practice inside a patient abdomen learn your energy sources you know properly you read them and remember how to correct them if some mishap happens you know you should know the troubleshooting harmonic is beautiful it's a beautiful as a cutting as a dissector as a coagulation but I'm, of course i'm not very happy with when the vessel sealing comes for the uterine and it's the same for all of us that we use bipolar and then go for it okay but uh, you know your life is nothing with uh, without harmonic so i think harmonic is wonderful thunderbeat i have used uh, three four times and uh, you know you are i'm happy with thunderbeat but it produces a lot of smoke so i've yes. stopped i've stopped uh, using <clears throat> it and uh, you know it's a bipolar as well as ultrasonic and it gives sometime it gives so much of smoke and uh, harmonic we can use for three four patients but thunderbeat i was not able to use uh, in um, more than one patient so i think the where the cost comes in uh, it gives a problem and uh, i will like to say what you have underlined it so beautifully please once you are doing a dissection and if the tip is sharp please don't retract the things or put the things near your bladder or on a bubble because the tip of the laparoscope is sorry a tip of your uh, harmonic is is heated for more than 100 degrees and another very important thing which i have read is like even with the harmonic there is a lateral damage of 0 to 3 mm so it means that remains in between your probes okay but if you are using it for more than 10 to 15 seconds on on a on a higher current you can give a lateral damage which has been seen in animal study so if you think your instrument is not working please don't put the pressure there and keep on producing the energy you know again and again to that particular spot so that's very important if your instrument is not working or it's not doing the purpose for which you have used please take it out by the time hold that thing with a maryland that vessel with the maryland and look into your instrument and same is with the bipolar that bipolar people will discuss about it please look into it and alka it was a wonderful presentation thank you ma'am and that was a very important point you raised because for any instrument it's very important if it's not working just just do not go on using the energy again and again and one more thing do not depend on your technicians to do all the setting learn to do the setting yourself in energy sources very important and uh, you know is it what she has said your settings you know if you keep on increasing your setting it will not coagulate it will cut so the minimum setting uh, the company always says three but mummy and nina we always put it one or two because in the coagulation is better you know and uh, and we have seen the vessel sealing is better with the three if we use it maybe we are reusing our instrument the coagulation is not that great please always check your coagulation or your instruments on a round ligament before you put that on a uterine and your uterine starts bleeding you know these are the little little tips which we want to discuss and for beginners don't uh, you know use the harmonic directly for vessel sealing use it first as a dissections uh, you know cutting use a bipolar also to coagulate and then go on and do it because you know all this takes experience also to learn exactly how much it would to use and if you use directly and you might end up with a bleeding when you cut the uterine the sealing might not be that effective you may not have applied it correctly so you know always baby steps as ma'am said start with the round ligament you know the vessel sealing uh, with harmonic is up to 3 to 5 mm and our uterines are 7 as you have said harmonic ace plus 7 is up to 7 but that uh, harmonic ace plus 7 is very expensive and you can use it only once yes that's the disadvantage otherwise it's a beautiful thing yeah, with insurances coming up, Dr. Angela, uh, I, I think uh, people uh, who can afford... But Panita, can the problem that, yeah. is, you, the, you know, the problem is the 
uh, of course, insurance is coming, but they are not covering. Like Gypsa doesn't cover uh, so much of, uh, like yeah. in one patient, if yeah, you want. Gypsa to... doesn't cover anything. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's a big Between you and me, Gypsa doesn't cover anything. Ah, this is so sad. It's so sad. Uh, I think it should go yeah, for yeah, uh, this is some uh, this is some another discussant also is with me. That's uh... yeah, Doctor Vidya is there. Doctor Vidya is joined. Doctor Vidya, are you with us? She had joined. Yeah, she's online. She's muted. Uh, can you unmute someone, uh, Shivam? Can you unmute her, please? Ma'am, I'm asking her to unmute her. Yeah, please do that. Uh, meanwhile, that was a very important so, Punita, point. Can I yeah. ask a question? Yes, please. Yeah, yeah I would sure. like to ask a question to Dr. Alka. Dr. Alka, your lecture was very crisp and very good and to the point. But I would like to ask you uh, whether in your routine TLS or in the stectomy, you have been using for the uterine only the harmonic or you have been using the bipolar also or you are taking the stitches, the stitch. So I'm not stitching. Yeah. I'm not taking stitches regularly. Bipolar is the instrument which I use most frequently because most of the patients either do not have insurance or have gypsy <laughs> company's insurance. But yes, whenever I do have a harmonic in hand, a patient with previous adhesions, wherever I am expecting that I'll be using it. For a small size uteruses, the harmonic works very well. However, if there's a large size uterus, whatever the companies say, I'm not going to go ahead and just, you know, uh, use a harmonic uh, directly. For larger uteruses with large fibroids, the uterines, uh, uterines you would see they are tortuous, dilated. You can almost see them. It's much better to do a bipolar and then cut with a harmonic or a coagulator and cut with a harmonic. But for normal size, like uh, AUB uteruses, the harmonic works fine. In this patient, I did not use the bipolar, but always have a bipolar in hand. Do not do any surgery. Even in a patient where you do not expect that you will require, even when you're doing a ligation, please don't do, be, do the surgery without table. a bipolar working. A bipolar should always be on your yes. table. You know, yes. like, so I always you... use bipolar and then do harmonic. If I don't have, uh, if I'm using NSYNC, then I go and use NSYNC. You know, whatever you say, the bipolar is a uh, butter. You know, <laughs> and especially if there is bleeding, then after that, the harmonic will not work. So, so you need a bipolar. Uh, Alka, at what setting you use the harmonic for the uterine and for the other vessels? Do you change all the time or you use the same setting? Usually two and five works quite well. Or you make it the one and five? I do five one works one. well for me. One and five, we can do more than that. Then it becomes uh, very less. Uh, you usually don't change the setting. No, we don't. We change. can change the setting, but you know, very frequently it becomes a little difficult because you know you are doing so many things, and also usually as a default, two and five is the setting which I use for so my so surgery. Youngsters should know. What will be the difference in when change the setting? As before? you go yeah. on and increase the power, there'll be a rapid cutting and less of coagulation. So you have to adjust accordingly, depending on the balance which you want between coagulation and cutting. You want more coagulation, you want less speed of cutting, decrease the setting. You want more speed of cutting, less coagulation, increase the setting. Yeah, that I actually I wanted youngsters should learn this. Thing. Yes, and that is uh, just and one point I would like to add. Thing. If there is a need of a needle, we cannot do with a sword. So a bipolar and a monopolar, I think there should be a must in the amenatorium of a laparoscopic surgeon. Definitely. Because definitely. the users cannot you know, be with any other vessel. You need a bipolar. And and the, the, very good, you know, very good. the most that, important thing is like if you're using bipolar you please speak that you need bipolar and if you're using harmonic say harmonic and please check your foot pedal what you are doing you know it's not that somebody has put some foot pedal and you are uh, doing that so it's very important for a beginner to know the instrument where the foot pedal is and start speaking I need bipolar and bipolar cautery you check if you put because they're all everything will be on your side it becomes very difficult you have to become habituated and your OT staff should be habituated even whatever it is I remember Malvika telling everybody please speak please speak you know 
It's a, you <laughs> want bipolar, you want harmonic. You are asking okay. for a bipolar, somebody is giving you a harmonic and you are using and never put two quatries in your two hands. Yeah. So, one yeah. And, and, really, you know, <laughs> I'll just add one thing. So in my training program, I would always have energy sources as a subject which was covered for an hour. And it was something, you know, the basics were always covered. And I would always tell everybody, it's just like driving a car. You know, you know, your left, you know, those old times when you didn't have automatic cars, you were automatically tuned to the fact that where would your left foot go and where would your right foot? So you never put in your foot on the accelerator in case you wanted to put a brake. It's just like that. So as a standard, you always get into a habit of putting bipolar under one foot. For example, for me, it is my left foot will always have a bipolar. My right will have a unipolar and my in between, I'll keep my ligature ultrasonic. So I'm always using my foot like that. And you have to be ambidextrous. Both your hands have to work. So everything is under your control and your mind very soon after you've been speaking for a while, then everybody is in sync with each other, you know? So it just goes as an automatic thing. That is very important. Another point, uh, Angela, you and Alka also very rightly said, Harmonic is very hot. So when you're using it as a uh, for dissection purpose, for any purpose, it should be well remembered that don't have it out of your sight. It can touch your intestines. So have it always under control. Number another point is that ultrasonic, when you go to these conferences, you will see everybody using ultra, uh, ultrasonic or harmonic. Harmonic is to do the uterines. And they have commanded the skill of using the correct pressure in what tangential yes. level yes. and do you the right amount of pressure for the right amount of time. And then they can just go ahead and do the uterine, etc. I personally feel I I prefer ligature over that. But having said that, I mean both are so good to have in your armamentorium for various reasons, you know. So we all must keep in mind we have to command. And very well brought out, Alka. I must congratulate you for excellent. Uh, can I add something, uh, uh, Dr. Alka? Great uh, proceedings. I just wanted to add, you know, energy sources are fine, but youngsters have to understand that you have to know the art of suturing. Oh, yes. Absolutely. You have to know the art of suturing despite having the best energy sources. So there are no shortcuts to not knowing suturing. Use Don't the energy future. sources. No future all without means. a suture. They yeah. are just a help. They are not a replacement for suturing, you know. Exactly so everything so. is to help you. It's not to so, uh, give you shortcuts. Right. Mm. So there are no shortcuts. Energy sources are a boon. They are good in practiced hands and experienced hands. And you should understand the energy source. It is not the fault of the energy source. It is the fault of the user if something goes wrong or amiss with the energy sources. The lateral thermal spread even in harmonic is there. Don't be under the impression that harmonic has no lateral thermal spread. Don't go by what the company says. We are reusing the harmonic. So lateral thermal spread is there. And when you keep repeating or repeating your uh, energy source on the same area, the lateral thermal spread is much greater. Okay, so these are the basics of energy source that you need to understand and know before using energy sources, right? So that's less wonderful. Thermal uh, energy, less lateral thermal damage is just less. It's not zero. It's just as compared to the uh, monopolar, as compared to that. Ultimately, the safety is in your hand. You have to make sure that you know your patient is safe. Like somebody says, the magic lies in the hands of the magician. Right on, Dr. Alka. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Punita, if you allow me to ask one more question to Dr. Alka. Yes, madam. How yes, can I say no to you? <laughs> yeah, no, no, there's no problem. I just, uh, I just wanted to know one more thing. Uh, Dr. Alka, suppose while well, you are using the harmonic and suddenly the active blade has touched the bowel loop. So how will you, uh, would, would you like to manage this patient? Means you will put the stitch on that area or you would just want to watch or how will you manage? See, again, it uh, uh, suspected injury, uh, any you instrument, any an, instrument uh, where you do such, has just touched the bowel loop. You can uh, depends. You know, if you have really touched it, uh, a, a shearing force. You know, uh, you when you're sure that yes, you have touched it just with touched a hot and, blade, and there is pressure yeah. on that. 
sometimes taking a stitch is uh, you know quite without easy. any pressure without any pressure ma'am i remember the case you're talking pressure, about then there's there likely to be some damage if there is just the bowel in that off, area maybe there won't be any sorry if there is blanching in that area i think we then should there is if there is blanching then there is some thermal injury depending yeah, on the extent and the area which has blanched you may need to take a stitch you might need to really you know cover it up with a layer of stitches or if there is no blanching there is no injury it has just glanced blanching off which then you just examine it blanching which persist it means you have done the damage yes yes so examine the inspect it inspect it thoroughly both sides turn to both sides take a bowel grasp for examine that area carefully and then if needed you have to take a stitch so i think if there is a blanching then definitely you have to you have to take a stitch so there is a some injury and you have to manage yes blanching is a sign of ischemia that means you have injured yeah. it there is thermal injury and if there is thermal injury it can lead to loss of integrity later so it's better to take a stitch in that area okay. yeah and, and what you do yeah. on 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 blanching you have to over sew that area how long is the blanched area depending yes. on that you have to go beyond the blanched area and over sew if you are not confident about suturing the bubble call a bubble surgeon gi surgeon or the surgeon but if you are adept at suturing and you know what you are doing please go ahead and do it yourself if it's an okay. extensive area also what becomes important is that you are while suturing you are not narrowing the lumen and also if it's extensive it's better to take a help if it's just a one a few stitches it's you can always do it on your own also right thank you so much dr alka i'm asking here Dr. Punita, can I add a point here? Oh, finally we see you, madam. We were waiting for you all the while. Please go ahead. Good evening, everybody. Uh, Dr. Alka, it was a great presentation and uh, great inputs by Dr. Malvika as usual. Uh, yes, as you said, whenever you see a blanching, yeah, you do take a stitch when it is extensive. But you also mentioned, Dr. Alka, that you shouldn't narrow the bowel. so in the same way when you are suturing the bowel you have to keep in mind that try never to go vertically because the bowel length is good so always suture it transversely so that there is no stricture so this is a tip given by all bowel surgeons so if you are well versed you are working with them i think this tip we should always keep in mind so that we do not cause any untoward effects on the surgical team yes yeah, sure thank you thank you dr vidya thank you for adding a very important point so okay. dr can Pumita? we go on yeah. to the next speaker dr vidhi please yeah uh, thank you all to ma'am and thank you vidya ma'am and ajla ma'am that was thank a wonderful you for this uh, opportunity and uh, definitely a package of knowledge for beginners like us thank you ma'am and uh, moving on to our next topic for the discussion the first principles of bipolar electrosurgery Our speaker is Dr. Sumit Patel. I welcome you, sir. is a obstetrician and gynecologist and uh, director at Mayflower Hospital, Women's Hospital, Gujarat. And also we have our discussant, Dr. Sujata Kar. Ma'am is a renowned gynecologist, endoscopic surgeon, and fertility specialist based in Bhubaneswar. And uh, Dr. Usha M. Kumar. Mom is principal consultant, endoscopic surgeon at Max Super Specialty Hospital, Delhi. I welcome you, Mom. Thank you very much, Mom, for the introduction. I thank AOGD and IAG for the giving me the opportunity to speak. Uh, thank you, Punita, Mom, Chandra, Mom, and Malika, Mom. Uh, I would like to start my video. I'll just share my screen. I'll just start the video. Namaste. It was almost ninety-five years ago that William Bowie's invention and Harvey Cushing's neuros. uh uh shivam can you check please the audio is gone uh 
so the about to say the tail, sir you you have to unmute yourself i guess yeah can you see, uh, is this visible now together in a tight yeah it's visible yeah. but sound is not there okay uh, should i start it again yeah, yeah please do that yeah. Think, yeah thank you namaste it was almost 95 years ago that william bowie's invention and harvey cushing's neurosurgery laid the foundation for what we ubiquitously use as a ligation and sealing technology in operating theaters at all levels however it wasn't until 1998 that we saw the first commercial bipolar <coughs> vessel sealing instrument it's been a long journey of understanding how pressure and temperature impact the state of a vessel and how we can use this information in effectively sealing the vessel in the course of a surgery I come from a gynecological lineage and the pelvis happens to be a region with several organs and systems displaying complicated vasculature densely packed together in a tight space proper delineation of margins meticulous discovery and adherence to the plane job dissection and a clear understanding of altered anatomy becomes the pillar of a good surgery however all these are in vain if the surgeon is unable to effectively manage the labyrinth of vessels and potential bleeders present in the space this is where a strong understanding of the first principles of bipolar electrosurgery comes in at mayflower we use an advanced bipolar with a blade that uses both electricity to cook the tissue as well as manage power delivery and compression for better results however the principles that govern surgical outcome remain the same even for surgeons using a much more primitive form of a bipolar vessel sealer but before we jump to instruments we must first begin by understanding how vessel sealing happens we begin with the principle of sealing two sets of factor control it physical factors include compression heat and time the harder you press the hotter it gets and the longer you hold all aggravate the tissue cooking process the set of factors are the uncontrollable biological factors like the amount of collagen elastin and water in each tissue collagen when deformed has a tendency to stay that way making vessel sealing efficient elastin on the other hand wants to retain its original shape while water content makes the vessel more conductive and therefore sealing more efficient running electricity through a dry tissue can charge it really fast so collagen is good for sealing elastin is not but we have both this present in all vessels we aim to seal and the ratio of collagen and elastin with a vessel has a lot to do with the burst pressure of the newly sealed and ligated vessels higher the ce ratio higher the burst pressure of a vessel seal and cut through electrosurgery but that's not all there are a bunch of vessel properties that affect the quality of seal and the eventual burst pressure that we can attain after sealing the size or diameter of the vessel the angle of approach calcification atherosclerosis type of vessel the patient's platelet count hypertension and more the number of factors impacting the nature of seal are numerous and hence i always believe in trading slow with the first few cuts on any patient we must boldly proceed only after we know how the tissue are reacting to the tool it's also worth noting that small vessels hold up higher burst pressures compared to larger vessels of the same type this is best explained through jumping into an actual surgery i'm going to take you through the part of a tlh surgery where we first dissect the ip ligament we have two options one is to take the whole ligament along with all the contained vessels as it is we are using an advanced bipolar here but you will notice that because of the surrounding parenchyma we have to hold the tissue in place for longer and the pressure required for effective sealing is also higher as discussed previously time heat and pressure all play a critical role in effective sealing and ligation however the better way of doing this would be by dissecting the ip ligament and skeletonizing all the vessels inside of it when we place just the vessel within the reaches of the grasper the coagulation quality turns out much better with the high burst resistance when we move towards the round ligament while ligating here i would advise not to stray too close to the uterus 
the corneum of the uterus isn't the best place for tissue ligation or vessel sealing. Also, closer to the cornua, the vessels approaching the uterus grow transverse to each other and in turn don't remain perpendicular to the planes of our dissection anymore. Here is an illustration to help you better understand the problem. From here, we move towards dissecting the broad ligament. We begin by taking the posterior side first. I make sure to only take the peritoneum and leave any other tissue including the contained vasculature intact. From here, we dissect all the way down to the uterocecal ligament. This lateralizes the ureter and we can now make sure we don't accidentally injure it. From here, we move towards the anterior side. Here, we proceed by dissecting the anterior peritoneal tissue along with any flimsy adhesions as well as smaller vessels contained within the ligament. By doing this, we skeletonize the major vessel supplying it to the uterus and now can ligate them effectively. What is also to be kept in mind is the anterior wall of broad ligament further splits into the folds for the bladder and the cervix. Staying between the folds when dissecting ensures we don't damage any major vessels supplying either of these two organs. We also end up making sure our dissection is precise and the field does not get bloody. The skeletonized vascular supply of the uterus is ligated by coagulating it progressively at three separate points and then placing a cut at the center. This safeguards us against the case of retrograde blood flow out of the uterus while also ensuring a clean cut. It's important to note here that the plane of departure for the ureter is also close to the uterus and we roughly have 1.5 to 2 cm of tissue margin for placing our points of coagulation. Too close to the uterus and the coagulation profile will be poor. Too far away and we risk injuring the ureter. It is therefore really important for us to properly denude and dissect the ligament and then proceed for ligation. Bipolar electrosurgery also comes in handy while attempting to navigate a much more complicated web of vasculature present near the lateral pelvic wall in the retroperitoneal space. This large group of vessels originating from the aorta begin as common iliac vessels, splitting into the internal and external iliac vessels, uterine vessels, obturator vessels, rectal and vesical vessels, followed by many more. Together, they form a complex vascular web in the retroperitoneal space that we aim to dissect basis of our surgery. Here, I'm taking a case of deep infiltrating endometriosis, a complex anatomy-altering disease that loves to dress up as something new each time I encounter it in a patient. Vascular web dissection begins at the pelvic brim by lifting the peritoneum lateral to the infundibular pelvic ligament, making a nick and entering retroperitoneally. Enough dissection should be made cranially to ensure sufficient exposure for further dissections and at the same time make sure you stay parallel to the infundibular pelvic ligament. Moving cord the dissection here should be carried out till the round ligament again to ensure enough room. Moving in, we identify the internal iliac artery and lateralize it from the ureter. For further dissection, we hold the connective tissue around the vessel and pull it. This traction will help us effectively isolate the vessel from all surrounding tissue. Moving on, we identify the first anterior branch of internal iliac artery also known as the uterine artery and circumferentially dissecting the tissue away to make the vessel naked. This step is critical to ensure effective coagulation when we cut the blood supply to the organ. Any residual tissue around this vessel could lead to suboptimal coagulation and subsequent complications. Besides fat, tissues like muscle, lymphatics and solid organs also hinder effective coagulation of the vessel. In cases of DIE, the ureter is often found to be in varying degrees of involvement and the method of dissecting it will have to vary greatly in each case. We have done a detailed video on the five levels of ureter dissection that is available on Mayflower Hospital YouTube channel for anyone who might be interested. Moving on, at this point in the surgery, Knowing your spaces is crucial because every once in a while you will encounter a case of DIE where creating potential anatomical space will be imperative to an effective surgeon. Here you can see how a good knowledge of space helps us dissect all the vessels with ease and create clean anatomical spaces and progress the surgery with great visibility. Entering the lateral pararectal space, we identify inferior rectal artery. We continue the dissection to first open up the inferior para space 
followed immediately by the superior paravesical space effectively freeing the superior and inferior vesical artery from all surrounding connective tissue continuing our dissection for the paravesical space gets us all the way to the pelvic floor we retreat back into the pararectal space and proceed our dissection towards the obturator fossa moving further down that road took us to the obturator artery and obturator nerve clearly visible in our dissection this marks the end of vascular web dissection you saw how in case of flimsy adhesions with the ureteric dissection the advanced bipolar vessel sealer and a basic understanding of how it work can go a long way in help us dissect the vasculature of the entire pelvic space and provide an affirmative foundation for the surgery going forward the bipolar vessel sealer also finds a pertinent use case in tissue surrounding major vessels in cases where ligature of vessel itself might not be required especially if the vessel is large so for the last segment i would want to focus on use of advanced bipolar vessel sealer in a paraaortic <coughs> perinectomy i am bringing you a part of surgery we conducted for a patient suffering from carcinoma of the endometrium it is indicated that in cases of endometrial carcinoma lymph nodes from around the aorta have to be extracted up to the left renal vein we identify the right common iliac which is generally easier to identify compared to the left common iliac artery and trace it to reach its bifurcation from the aorta at the bifurcation we lift up the fat and surrounding tissue and use the advanced bipolar to coagulate and cut staying flush to the aorta along one margin the duodenum and other parts of the small intestine might come in our way in which case we leave them anteriorly and cranially to create space and carry on with the dissection we continue the delineation up to the renal vein once done we come back towards the origin of the common iliac artery and delineate flush to the inferior vena cava this should ideally give you a single mass of lymph nodes and then peripheral tissues but it is absolutely normal to get this in bits and pieces too from here we lateralize the ureter and dissect lymph nodes lateral to the aorta on the opposite side of the ivc again reaching up to the renal vein and extracting the advanced bipolar provides several benefits first of which is lymphoria or lymph leak often occurring due to poor sealing of lymph node upon cutting the lower spread of thermal energy owing to the controlled energy output is also particularly relevant as it prevents thermal injury to the major vessels proximity to the lymph nodes that concludes my thought on basics of bipolar electrosurgery and how they find relevance in the surgery if i were to summarize it as short mm -hmm. action points it would be just three things first take it slow when you start see how the tissue react and proceed accordingly find the right plane of coagulation always stay perpendicular to the axis of vessel third heat is a bit tricky tool be careful if your bipolar tool does not automatically manage heat distribution in closing i would like to thank all of you for your time a large part of what i do in surgery is thanks to the guidance of past breaking doctors like dr sanjay patel and dr lakshman kheria who taught me everything i know about surgery and our staff at mayflower women's hospital that works tirelessly both inside and outside the operation theater to not only help me do good surgery but more importantly help our patients on their path to wellness i hope this talk help you think harder about bipolar surgeries and the contingencies involved i would love to take any questions that you may have now thank you thank you so much dr patel uh, it was wonderful display of uh, anatomy and wonderful dissection of tissue using bipolar uh, cautery just for the viewers uh, for the youngsters uh, advantages could you please tell uh, all of us what is the difference between the simple bipolar devices and these the modern devices we people are using like covidian ligature and all so basically what the difference is is um, in advanced bipolar you get compression yeah. and a knife yeah. that is the only difference between a simple bipolar and an advanced bipolar okay so um we most of the people we are in you habit of using uh hybrid cannulas we are using uh, uh <clears throat> plastic cannulas and the metal cannulas together 
So does it make any difference in the safety profile when you use uh, we use electrical uh, energy sources? Ma'am, this consideration would be into account when you use a monopolar uh, energy sources. In case of bipolar, uh, our energy, the electricity runs between the two jaws of bipolar. So if there is hydration between the two jaws of bipolar, the current will pass exactly perpendicular to each other. And once the hydration is lost, uh, it will laterally spread and the, hence the coagulation of that tissue in the grasp, which is coagulated. So ma'am, generally it does not affect when you are using a bipolar or advanced things. But in case of monopolar, yes, we have to be very, um, what we say, vigilant about our use of instruments with that. We use a lot of pottery and a lot of energy sources when you, we do TLH and we use uh, we, we are in habit of desiccating the tissue at the vault. And nowadays I have seen many patients, they are coming with secondary heme rays. So do you think is there any relationship uh, in using too much of pottery and this secondary heme rays uh, from the vault? Ma'am, at the uh, vault, uh, yeah. so in the vagina, we should be using minimal use of energy sources as possible. Hence, use of harmonic is always good at the colpotomy area. And we should never, in, uh, what we say, bipolar at the inside of the vagina. It will always lead to post-op discharge or uh, some kind of complications in the post-op area. So always give a good cut at the colpotomy and suture it well, take good bites and hitch it towards the uterosacral part. So it will always pull up and it will create a form of traction so there is no prolapse also. Uh, Dr. Sumit, have, have you encountered patients uh, post hysterectomy, they are coming to you after one month of surgery or one and a half month of surgery, like they are coming with the profuse bleeding from the vault, and it looks like that uh, the uterine artery has opened it up, and they one of the one my patient she got even collapsed. So, uh, have you un encountered such patients in your practice, and how have you managed such patients in your practice? I have never encountered such patients, but the trick here is to always ligate your vessels properly. And uh, the point here, what might have happened is, uh, I think you must have charred the tissue. So, uh, charring is basically disintegration of the tissue. How much lightening the char which happens, it will always leak. The tissue is disintegrated. So, it is not going to hold the pressures of the vessels which is sealed. So, we should never let the charring happen. And just a simple coagulation, make sure that the vessels are sealed is more than enough. And if you are having a big vessel, a big bunch of uh, what we say a pedicle, then always ligate at three points and always cut at the center. So just to uh, tell everyone that uh, two of my patients actually post hysterectomy, they came, uh, one came after one month and another one, she came after six weeks of surgery and they really was bleeding like anything. And then I, I really thought there's something goes, went wrong or why this, how uh, after was, uh, six weeks of surgery, how come the, there is slough, sloughing happened and then uterine artery started bleeding. How I managed, I had just put them on antibiotic and I did the vaginal packing. So uh, these two patients, I was able to manage them well and the bleeding was stopped. So I was just wondering, maybe this is because of too much of... Uh, uh, over there, or maybe because of infection. Uh, so yeah, it could be. Will... It could be both, uh, Doctor Usha. It could be both, and I think uh, we should talk about these secondary hemorrhages. You know, which can be easily managed, like mm -hmm. Doctor Patel said. Uh, that one charring and two uh, is the infection, which cause. Uh, these are the two most important causes of secondary hemorrhage after so long. Uh, you know, these the patients idea, you would never uh, find a bleeder actually. It will be yeah, just right, that absolutely. slough and granulation it's, tissue. And not only at the vault, I think at any area, excessive cautery is not good, whether it's at the fundus of the uterus exactly. or at the uterine or at the vault. Too much of blackening and charring and all that means we have gone overboard. That means, uh, Dr. Patel, that was an excellent lecture. I would want to ask you one question. What makes you decide the settings of your energy sources? Whether you're using a, um, um, uh, a bipolar right. or you're using the, a harmonic or you're using a... Um, I know there are set uh, settings for these automatic machines which sense, have sensors which decide. So uh, but otherwise... I'll come to this point. Uh, we don't use monopolar, so that is out of the question. I'm not discussing that. Right. And bipolar, the, always the trick is 
maintain the ratio of 1 is to 3 so if your bipolar is at 30 your monopolar should be at 60 and okay. how you come to these values is basically you keep on doing your surgeries and fluctuate those numbers and one the one which is comfortable to you adjust to that some might have 30 60 the other might have 20 and uh, 60 <coughs> sorry 20 yeah, but- uh, accordingly so always maintain the ratio of 1 is to 3 uh, yeah. so 30 and 90 accordingly uh, for the harmonic i always use 5 and 3 uh, generally it is almost the 5 which we use i never use the 3 the harmonic is always used for dissection and not for coagulation the rightly advanced, said yeah the advanced the newer versions of hd 1000i with the curved and they are very good at coagulations but uh, since it is a single time use instrument also uh, the advanced setting is already prefixed in that so does not matter which one you use for the coagulation also in harmonic if you are using it for an advanced coagulation it will lead to a large heat generation of the probe and it gets really hot so we usually avoid using that we always use at 5 just for dissecting purposes and what about people who you know uh, uh, there are people who use it at 2 5 1 5 uh, do you think that works for everyone? What is the advantage of using the setting at 1.5 yeah. and 2.5? I uh, would not comment on uh, using it at 1.5, 2.5. It is generally a personal choice which once get used to it. If, if they are used to it, uh, it is the best solution for them. But if we look uh, retrospectively, the what we say, the technique of harmonic, one joy is always stable, the other joy is always vibrating. Right? So, right. maximum it goes up to 50,000 hertz per second. 55,000 they say, yeah. yeah. All right. So, uh, the basics, the, how bipolar dissect is, when you are dissecting, it will vibrate very fast. Right. When you are coagulating, it will vibrate very slowly. So, yeah. depending on your compression, the compression is in our hands. So, right. if, you, if you are compressing less, letting more tissue to rub, it will always coagulate better and then cut. And if you are using a 5 setting, it will always work fast and depending on your compression, the dissections will take place. So one one just need to understand this basic, uh, how they are getting used to this instrument and one might adapt. So there is no, uh, um, there is no fixed settings. If I use this, it might not be right for everyone, but one has to figure out uh, personal settings for everyone. Yeah, one has to have reasons for using the settings that they use. And the way they handle the tissue with stretch or without the stretch, that is one point. Another thing I wanted to ask you, have you used Thunderbolt? No, Thunderbolt, uh, okay. Uh, I would, uh, it would be a general question. Dr. Usha, have you used Thunderbolt? It's a combination of ultrasonic and harmonic. Right. Yeah, but I never used it. Uh, so I wonder why. <laughs> no, for the sake of discussion, anybody I using know. Thunderbolt? Because uh, ultrasonic and harmonic are two important uh, energy uh, modes. And the combination of the two should have worked better than either harmonic or like a show. I yeah. have used and Thunderbeat I... for quite many cases. But, you know, that's again not my go-to method. I usually have a harmonic and I have a bipolar oh. or an advanced bipolar. That is exactly what I'm getting at, Alka. Uh, because, the two you know, it advantages... feels, you be, I feel much more in control and I feel the outcome of my surgery is better when I have these devices separately as in a Thunderbeat. Over, uh, I have noticed it not just in one, two cases, over quite a uh, number of cases. But if you go through literature, they say Thunderbolt adds to the advantages of both the harmonic and the Liger show. It does, that you don't have to change the instrument, but somehow in practice, for me, it doesn't translate into that. I don't know about the rest of you. Yeah, and uh, Pita, we've used it. Yeah, we've used it in three, four cases. But it produces, uh, just the way with bipolar, you know, it produces lots of smoke. Right. Uh, Unlike, you know, when you're doing it using, then you can control two things. But with this, it looks apparently a very good device. I mean, it's so, we don't have to change hands going in and out with first bipolar and then with harmonic. It was very right. lucrative, but then it produced so much of smoke that it became uncomfortable. And plus, uh, we were not able to reuse it after, you know, in, even in the third case, you know, mar mar ke use karas. 
okay yes. even so harmonic it's harmonic with the advanced hemostasis this is the problem you cannot reuse it so frequently it gets uh, it's you know it's not useful rather it will be very expensive for the patient also uh, yes it was a bit expensive yeah. i think uh, that was uh, yeah dr chandra are you saying something yeah dr patel i would like to ask one question whether there is any difference in the setting of the that's in the harmonic as dr punita was discussing the 1 and 5 and 3 and 5 usually we have been using 3 and 5 so whether no, no, there is no difference. difference then why the surgeons they change the setting and whether there for the different type of the vessels there is a, a difference ma'am like i said uh, i'll just give you an example the ones the method which you choose the method you learn the way you are trained and how you apply it matters a lot yes. so yes. if you are taking harmonic and using the five uh, settings as of now but if you just if you don't compress it fully just uh, have a little bit of space between them then also it is going Coagulation. to be as good as possible like three or two settings it is Absolutely. just how you use it it does not matter which it is someone has recommended or uh, for you try and take three for uh, smaller vessels take two or bigger vessels take two it does not matter the way you use it may, more, mostly uh, mostly makes the difference Yeah, so I would like to add one point here. I yeah. don't recommend the exact settings, but I also I do recommend that have your training good. Uh, uh, experiment with your uh, the ways you work the the tissue it is, and then uh, proceed with your surgery. Don't jump the, to direct five or direct three. That doesn't exactly. Work. It's the tissue response. It's the tissue response and how you handle tissue which matters rather than what energy source you're using. I think thank you very much, Doctor Patel. That was excellent. One more question I want to ask. Sorry, Doctor Patel, I want to ask for the colpotomy in the stectomy. Whether you are using the harmonic or the monopolar, and I'm which asking. device is better? Ma'am, I have always used harmonic, and I'm really sorry to say I have no experience of monopolar. To be very yeah, honest. nobody so uses monopolar so now. No, no, no. In no. the generation when monopolar is considered to be an. What dehiscence is more with with what? Which energy source? Volt, dehiscence. No, he has never used monopolar, and uh, I so, think so harmonic. So he cannot come in. So he yeah, cannot so, come in. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. I think let's go to the next topic, please, Riddhi. Yeah, thank you, Doctor Patel. It was great listening to you. Now moving to our last topic, that is energy sources cost implications. I would like to invite uh, Doctor Arti Arti uh, Lutra. Ma'am is director, gynecologist and laparoscopic surgeon in Lutra Maternity and Fertility Center. and also dr neena bell ma'am is director consultant of the tissue and gynecologist at fortis lafem hospital and i'll invite uh, dr devin h jogal uh, sir is a renowned laparoscopic surgeon fertility specialist and director at jogal uh, women hospital in uh, kutch uh, welcome you sir thank you thank you very much at the outside i would like to thank you uh, aogd and iag for the great opportunity thank you dr punita ma'am dr malika ma'am and dr chandra ma'am for giving me such a great opportunity uh, today's my lecture or my topic is uh, just a minute is it visible now yes yes it is visible yeah. so uh, it is on the cost uh, we are talking about energy source and uh, we uh, when whenever we are talking about good energy sources we uh, have to keep in mind mind uh, cost as we have uh, our panelists they were discussing about the cost factor uh, because insurance may not cover all the time uh, all the cost of the advanced energy source that's why we need to uh, take care of that also so uh, um, what i would like to request all the iig members this time i'm contesting for managing committee election so whosoever iig member please vote for me now uh, conflict of interest and disclosure i'm not affiliated or on advisory board of any company vendor providing instruments discussed in this presentation and cost mentioned in the presentation are not actual and just an estimate taken from the verbal quotation by the vendors uh now we'll jump on the commonly used energy sources uh, which are monopolar bipolar advanced bipolar ultrasonic and combined ultrasonic and uh, bipolar 
so energy sources by utility one is vessel sealing second is dissection vessel sealing we use bipolar and advanced bipolar here i would like to add ultrasonic also because many a times for vessel sealing now uh, uh, greater and good energy sources like 1000 hdi probes by jnj are coming so uh, that also we can use for vessel sealing that i'll show you in my lecture later on for dissection we use monopolar ultrasonic and bipolar dissector uh, monopolar i would say it is out of uh, discussion now uh, we don't use monopolar for dissection point we use bipolar and uh, ultrasonic energy for dissection cost involved uh, main cost initial fixed cost which uh, is energy generator and recurring cost it is a hand instrument and if at all transducers are there with that then we may take into the consideration of uh, that then uh, initial fixed cost we if we talk about standards electrosurgical unit which has monopolar with bipolar and underwater function if we are using for hysteroscopic resection and all approximately 5 to 8 lakh ultrasonic generator approximately 12 to 15 advanced bipolar generator approximately 5 to 8 and combined ultrasonic uh, with bipolar approximately 10 to 12 recurring cost monopolar hook approximately 3 to 5000 bipolar grasper approximately 8 to 15 bipolar dissector 8 to 15 ultrasonic dissector mrp if we say 40 to 60 and combined bipolar with uh, dissector approximately 80 now uh, this is one chart uh, which is there for monopolar hook it is out of question usually we don't use so i'm not going to talk bipolar dissector which we usually use uh, fixed cost of bipolar energy or machine is 6 lakh recurring cost approximately uh, 12000 rupees bipolar dissector is costing number of surgeries 20 you can perform more surgeries also but after 20 it is very less use for that and per per surgery if you say cost is approximately 600 600 rupees ultrasonic dissector uh, if we if you use 12 to 14 lakh generator cost recurring cost 30000 uh, uh, you have to buy probe it is costing around 30000 i am saying uh, number of surgeries approximately 10 it is calculated and uh, you should add into that uh, 1 lakh cost per 100 surgeries of transducer also so it becomes overall approximately 4000 per surgery uh, combined ultrasonic uh, and um, uh, bipolar which is thunderbeat uh, approximately 10 lakh 45000 recurring cost it is also approximately 5 to 7000 rupees cost if we say now on practical aspect tips and tricks we are going to talk about how to use energy source efficiently effectively with less recurring cost so for that i am stop stop sharing my screen so that i'll be able to show you how how it works in just a minute hmm. okay so if we start with uh, dissector so this is dissector which we use usually it is bipolar energy is it visible Yes, it is. The 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 tip of the dissector which we use it approximately twenty surgeries you can use it effectively and after twenty surgeries it is usually it is not working that much uh, efficiently and effectively. Okay, so this is one. Now there is as such there is no tips and tricks in bipolar dissector to use because it is you know it has no ultrasonic energy it has no other things which you should be taking into the consideration. So I'll directly jump on the advanced bipolar. uh dr smith patel has beautifully explained how to use bipolar energy uh, to add into that uh, if use cost on uh, the the energy source we have to use it efficiently so you have to use such kind of instrument so that the life of that instrument will be longer okay so in that way you can cut the cost okay if you are buying instrument for let's say 50000 if you are using it for five times this is that is 10000 per per surgery cost so that is very expensive right so this is the uh, advanced bipolar energy which is liga shot see uh, what is the tip to use it first of all it is advanced bipolar energy so uh, whenever you use it you wait up till the total coagulation okay so uh, you don't uh, there is press button is there for cutting purpose okay so you you click and wait for the sound which will say that okay your coagulation has been completed okay after that completion you should be pressing it to cut 
okay there are two buttons one is compression one is cut this okay so when you use it you wait for the sound which will say that okay your coagulation has been completed it is fine then and then only you cut with this button many a times i have seen my fellow or beginners they what they do is they directly compress and directly press this button okay so when they directly press this button the spring action will not last for longer time so that way your uh, your this energy source advanced bipolar uh, if you are using it will not last for longer surgeries so that that way cost will be more in in that point of view okay uh, if we talk about uh, ultrasonic energy in ultrasonic energy there are two hand piece one which i want to talk about i'm i'm talking about uh, right now jnj harmony so there is uh, s plus 7 advanced hemostatic mode which we have got okay which is uh, good for the sealing purpose also and uh, there there are two blade one is active blade one is passive blade the blade which is moving right now you can see on your screen is the passive blade okay passive blade has got a kind of pad in that so it is not working it is only giving support to the active blade okay what is working is the uh, at the level, at the speed of 55000 megahertz so whenever you are using this instrument uh, this instrument whenever you use you don't press it completely like this okay if you compress it and you press it like this what happens is the pad uh, uh, gets uh, you know disturbed and uh, the pad gets uh, let's say uh, it will not work for the longer period so it may happen that initially when you use harmonic if you don't know how to use it and if you compress it all the time completely then your harmonic may last for maybe 3 4 5 or 6 surgeries may not last for longer time though it is it is one time use i agree uh, by the company and uh, you know what they write or what they advise but actually if you want to reuse it for the longer period of time what you can do is you don't compress it completely it is not required so if you see if you press it completely the active blade it is getting into the pad and that will disturb the pad and automatically you will not be able to use it for the longer time that is one second thing whenever your work with ultrasonic energy is complete when your whenever your surgery is complete let's say you have taken vault with the ultrasonic energy and now you are done okay so now it's time for suturing so what you do is you dip this into the water and you activate your uh, um, cutting uh, pedal let it be activated for 5 to 10 seconds so that all the micro particles which are there on the tip of this instrument will get washed away and you uh, ask your assistant to switch off the generator okay that will that way you uh, can add on the life on the generator and on the this point itself and the transducer also okay secondly whenever you ask your assistant to wash it make sure that they are washing it properly so that all the clot which are uh, or the piece of the tissue which are retaining inside or remaining inside will get away otherwise what happens that it will not act uh, actively it, it cannot work actively the this action of the see this action by which it is uh, it is moving that action will be slower and automatically your generator will not recognize your this instrument and your instrument will last for less surgeries so automatically cost will go up okay so that is uh one of the tips secondly you use it for dissection for dissection you don't require to press it completely that's the tip okay so if let's say i'm using it for this uh, uh, this tissue then i don't have to press it completely even this much of compression it is fine so that your pad will remain for longer time and you can use it for maybe 12 15 20 25 surgeries provided the the cleaning process is good and sterilization process is good that is one point now uh, one more thing which i would like to add is see the cost of transducer also you have to add in, into into this uh, s plus 7 uh, uh, pro there there is one more thing which i would like to add and which dr smith patel was saying this is the uh, the 1000 1000 hdi probe from the jnj so this is 1000 hdi pro which has got transducer inbuilt in that see this so you don't require a different transducer to be there for this this particular probe 
now why it is good because it has got uh, it has got more curved tip and more longer tip than the uh, ace plus 7 so see this tip is longer and sharper okay and it is curved is more in that the uh, discussion was going on uh, that uh, if you can seal uh, vessels with with the ultrasonic energy definitely you can seal provided your angle should be perfect so uh, let me explain in that way if this is uterus and this both are sides uterine is there if you start coagulating from here the uterine size from 5 to 7 mm it becomes 10 mm okay because the angle is not that if you want to coagulate it coagulate from the uh, both the ports from the lateral port okay put your instrument from the lateral port and start coagulating it let it be harmonic if you are comfortable with that let it be bipolar doesn't matter okay so that is one of the tip by which you can coagulate it well uh, with the vessel sealing effect with with uh, this probe 1000 hdi it becomes little bit easier because the the length of the tip is more okay for coagulation so that way you can use it secondly uh, using this instrument 1000 hdi it has got only few hours let's say they are saying 8 to 10 hours maybe 6 to 8 hours your work is done you immediately ask your assistant to to uh, to uh, switch off the generator so that hours by which you can save this hours in the in this uh, particular instrument and more hours you can work okay so if you are using it for high end surgeries then your high end surgery once it is it is finished complete your surgery then you don't wait up till you know suturing and um, suction irrigation and cystoscopy maybe you are doing and all these things and then you uh, switch off your generator you ask immediately your assistant to switch off the, that generator that way you can uh, you can decrease the cost of the energy source because nowadays if you want to work uh, nowadays uh, we are getting very difficult cases and if you are want want to do good surgeries with good high end instruments you have to invest so cost factor that way you can decrease few more points are there with which you can decrease cost uh, uh, but that i think we cannot discuss on on, on this um, uh, platform so for that uh, separate uh, i think uh, this discussion is required and uh, with that I'm, i i would like to take questions because because cost cutting there is no something which we can explain on ppts it is practical thing so whatever questions are there i would like to answer great dr jogol i think that was a very difficult topic and you managed to make it very practical uh, dr neena and dr arthi are the discussants uh, can they pitch in please yes um, that actually it is a very difficult topic because neither is it uh, written in books nor it is available in on google or neither it is in uh, you know any rcog guideline how to decrease the cost because one the first thing we are reusing our instruments you know they are supposed to be disposable but then i have gone through literature also and there has been literature which is you know trying to compare things uh, reusing harmonic reusing n seal so people everywhere are reusing number one it's not that we are alone who are reusing in india abroad also people are reusing number one so if you just look at the cost by the mrp then if you are using one disposable nc let us 70000 mrp mm -hmm. i said i am blessed to be working in a place where cost is not 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 a major issue in fortis la farm uh, but still you know if you look at things sometimes we are even taking bipolar nc and harmonic in the same patient which is like if you see it as disposable it is 70000 nc 70000 harmonic and and already dr dev Devan has told about bipolar also. It also costs a thing, but at the same time, what I would like to say is that if we use our instruments judiciously, you know, it's just like piece of jewelry for all laparoscopic surgeons. Think, don't think it is hospitals or the person who's bringing the instruments. The onus is that person's only. Exactly. One very so. important uh -huh. to keep your instruments in proper condition prolongs the life of the instrument. do not use instrument where it is not required switch off the generator clean your instruments well and do not put undue pressure you know if a harmonic is supposed to be for dissection use it for that purpose only don't use it to twist and turn things inside don't use it as a merryland if it is if, you know that's what these are the things which can prolong the life of an instrument so if we go properly we are able to use it in 8 uh, to 10 cases easily 
these instruments yeah dr devan very good tips and uh, i think it's the most useful talk uh, when we talk about energy sources and the main message which you have given is cost effectiveness but never think about cost cutting i am in a private setup still i would prefer to use the best instrument because you know the safety which a mercedes gives a maruti uh -huh. can give so uh -huh. if we want to be very safe for our patients and if you want to enjoy our surgery my message to all the youngsters will be that go for the best instruments maintain them well take good care of them and enjoy your surgery using the the best of course a good bipolar and a good ultrasonic energy shear and obviously harmonic which everyone is so fond of gives you a good uh, ot experience and it helps all the beginners in improving their skills also because if you are doing a simple tlh if you use a bipolar and harmonic judiciously judiciously like we were discussing dr smith says that he uses only harmonic but for a youngster they can do uh, they can coagulate with a bipolar first and then use harmonic that saves the time also yes. and then they are more confident also so in that way ma'am uh, pardon me yeah, what 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 you are uh, what you are saying in that way we can save uh, also so if you are using uh, bipolar for coagulation for some point of time and if you use then harmonic to cut then you can save uh, the life of the harmonic also so in that way also you can cut down or you, you can lower down the cost secondly is and you decide where to use uh, what instrument so if you are using let's uh, uh, for me practically speaking i use a 1000 hdi probe which is a little bit costlier than the routine harmonic i use it for uh, uh, um now in cases high end cases where i need to do paraortic or where i need to do a pelvic lymphadenectomy or in in case of grade 4 endometriosis where rectal dissection be required in particular uh, those points so in that, in that uh, particular way also yeah at in it improves the surgical experience also like you won't land up with secondary hemorrhages and uh, you won't be you know having that fear of landing up with secondary complications also so right. good energy sources good maintenance and of course the best ones that's very very important right. yeah right. and dr punita it's a it's a lovely webinar and all the topics <laughs> are of critical importance i know everyone would be having lots of doubts and the chat box is also getting lots of questions yeah i am glad i thought you know because cost is something so important for all of us whether we are working in the private sector or in the government setup you know people talk about uh, efficient technology and cost effectiveness so it's important to discuss it out although we don't have any papers or literature doesn't have too much i wanted to ask a question with dr devan uh, yes. dr devan can we talk something about the volume of the surgery and you know the surgical duration the efficiency yeah. of the instrument is all right but what about the volume you know whether small volume people should buy according to their kind of practice uh, that they have or they should have the best technology with them what would you suggest uh ma'am i think uh, uh, we are talking about cost that is fine but safety at uh, uh, utmost importance which which uh, our patient safety is there so even Absolutely. if volume is I not think volume is not also i think surgeon <laughs> yeah. safety automatically. also yeah that is yeah, also yeah. very important <laughs> yes ma'am yes automatically it comes uh, uh, on the surgeon also right so and you uh, rightly because, said uh, and you yeah you rightly said ki because care of the instrument is very important if you are yes. keeping the pressed all the time the instrument is just like a driver who keeps a one foot on the clutch and and uh, reduces the life of the clutch pedal so it's just like that so you whenever it's not in the use you should not press unnecessarily the your instrument so care of the instrument is very very important yes right that dr right. devan brought and, it out yeah. very well but i yeah. also want to talk about complications when you use a less yes. efficient energy source and you right. have complications then the cost right. automatically goes up to the setup the right. same so right. that is why uh, acquisition right. cost is something but what about the opportunity cost you know something like when you have the duration of the surgery goes long and what would you think about the profit margins uh, right 
what would you think about the profit margins uh, ma'am definitely uh, if we, uh, we if we talk about volume uh, in high volume center coming and almost all surgery are uh, uh, high risk let's say 80 percentage because we are getting a uh, reference uh, from all all around the you know this right so, so i think there is a problem in connectivity uh, cost for me can't hear you nicely dr uh, i think connectivity can't is hear you. there's some problem with connectivity dr devan we can't hear you punita dr punita i yeah. would like that major comment. issue because yeah, yeah. yeah. there Oh, just a minute. Yeah, now we can hear you. Now, now we now, can hear I, you. Audible? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. 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 So, uh, what what I was saying was, uh, uh, like high volume centers, like uh, like in our centers and all, we don't have that much issue about cost because approximately forty five to sixty surgeries we are performing in a month. All surgeries, mostly all surgeries are high end surgeries because we are we have referred practice. So uh, from all over district, we are getting reference. But uh, in cases where uh, less number of surgeries uh, are performed, uh, in that centers maybe the cost uh, may be the bigger issue than than us. But still, I would say um, profit margins are always there. So you should be calculating that way efficiently if you can use their energy source. you may not you you may we've lost your voice dr dev yeah uh, dr luth aarti was saying something uh, uh, dr aarti yeah i would like to add that it's not the volume i think it's the you know the excellent surgery which matters the most and if a center is giving good surgeries obviously the volume would increase so we should not Gradually. think about the number of cases it should be the best outcome which matters the most for everyone even for the beginners who are just doing ectopic still i would say the best bipolar should be there they may not have harmonic in the beginning and we all should get to learn the best use of bipolar because sometimes the harmonic uh, may may not Uh, work properly and it's very important to have standby hand pieces for all and these they, yeah. what we do uh, uh, i think everybody would be doing the same it is the number of hours which a instrument is used rather than the number of surgeries which, which we have done with that instrument i mean a harmonic can do up to 12 like topics 20 like topics but even two tlh by inexperienced people can you know knock it off so what right. we just uh, keep on opening you know mcls and harmonics and keep on noting the number of hours which it has been used and absolutely number of hours which it was on the generator sometimes uh -huh. it is just lying on the table we are not using it you know then we are not spoiling it right. so that is how we keep track of things and keep on reusing those things judiciously so uh, adding to the discussion what do you, do you think about reduction of operating time do you think that can provide a substantial benefit for surgical practice and reducing costs so cost of course if if the instrument is good the cost is and the number of hours you are putting in a surgery will go down because if you are using best of the instruments you know if you using bipolar and scissors the way we used to do 20 years ago you know bipolar <laughs> and scissor bipolar and scissor it used to keep on bleeding and bleeding and bleeding and then there was smoke and then there were you take out the laparoscope and then again So now with no, harmonic and MC, it is so smooth. Bipolars were so also not so minutes. good. Yeah, the mm -hmm. exchange of instruments is also not there. You know, the Absolutely. plain monopolar and bipolar. You have to keep uh, removing the instrument, putting in the scissors, doing in the bipolar, and then putting it back again. So yeah. that also reduces the cost, and that's why I think harmonic has become so popular. It is yeah. not only efficient in technology; it reduces your instrument exchange. and it uh, it uh, gives you the opportunity cost also it is more efficient reduces surgical time reduces cost i am no advocate of harmonic i mean i have not been paid no, to say this ncl ncl we have used ncl now for last almost uh, two years we are using ncl as uh, this thing from right yeah. from the round to the uh, ovarian to uh, uterines you know it works so beautifully you don't have to there's hardly any bleeding you know it just looks like a textbook kind of a tlh when you do with ncl 
But obviously, do we have uh, do we have Dr. Devin? Also with the articulation the same generator. and feel. <clears throat> Dr. Devin, your yes. last word, yes, please. Yes. Uh, you were telling yeah. us about the duration and the cost effectivity uh, yeah, with yeah. the uh, volumes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Can so, you finish uh, that and wrap it up? Uh, yes. So uh, at the at the end, which, which instrument I shown, I have shown that thousand HDI pro with that uh, in expert end, you can finish your surgery even with that one instrument mostly. So uh, because uh, it has got longer tip and uh, you know good um, uh, vessel sealing effect. So in that way also you can reduce the cost because only one instrument you are using the uh, faster you can use it. Uh, you become expert in that particular uh, particular instrument and maybe you can finish it off maybe in 30 35 minutes so your duration of surgery will not last longer that way uh, cost of the anesthesia cost of the other things and uh, you know medicines for ga all will reduce so that way also your cost would not get tired and surgeon would not get tired yes so you yes, can do the yes. more surgeries <laughs> so uh, also uh, very important. So surgeon's right. health is uh, also important. Yes. Uh, uh, Doctor yes, Devin, right, what right. about uh, adding yeah. suturing? Do you think adding suturing, ligating, uh, would reduce the costs? Can you do away with the energy uh, sources but, for? But, yes, but uh, uh, let's say suturing is at the highest end of uh, you know superiority. I can say nothing yeah. will work. Then only suturing will work. Absolutely. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you only, only one, one example. Uh, whenever we are doing uh, CA cervix surgeries, nowadays we have reduced that way because after LSEC trial. But whenever we are doing, whenever you are taking parametrium, the vaginal vein and vaginal artery will bleed 101%. Yes, and absolutely. And if, <laughs> if it will start bleeding, nothing will work. No bipolar, no energy source, no top high-end uh, surgeon can help. Only suturing will help. So right. suturing it as at top, and if you don't know suturing, first you learn suturing, then you start using energy sources. I would say exactly, so, exactly so, my point, exactly yeah. my point, and this is what I wanted to bring across. Although we are presenting a webinar on energy sources, you right. can't and should not do away with suturing. I am a great right. advocate of suturing. Thank you yes. very much, Doctor Devin Yoga. That Thank was you. wonderful. You. you did yeah. just so, Doctor Devin, uh, if you use the suturing. Then yes. at the in the uterine, then it is a more co cost effective. You see, suturing would yes. not cost you anything. Yes, ma'am. But micro... it will it will take yes, huh? ma'am. But it will take ten to fifteen minutes extra, five to ten minutes extra. <laughs> oh come on! <laughs> that, no, that, no, that no, 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 no. I I don't agree to that. I think let <laughs> wrap it up. No, uh, that is immaterial. You see, that no, is immaterial. No, no. Suturing can be a good night's sleep. You can be rest assured that you've ligated the vascular pedicles and you are yes, uh, uh, at peace at night. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I, I think Dr. Riddhi, we secure. can wrap it up. You are very secure. Dr. You're very uh, secure. Dr. Riddhi, Dr. Riddhi, can you invite Dr. Chandra, please? Yeah. yeah uh, I'm thank already you, here. <laughs> <laughs> now, please, uh, Dr. Chandra Bansukhani. She is, uh, ma'am, a senior consultant at the Sagangaram Hospital and president of ISOPAR presently in Delhi chapter. Ma'am, please, I call you for the... Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Riddhi. Yeah, so on the behalf of Endoscopy Committee of AOGD and IAG Delhi chapter, it is my proud privilege to propose a vote of thanks. First of all, I thank Dr. Achla Batra, president AOGD, for giving us this opportunity to organizing this webinar on such Dr. Malvika Sabarwal, Founder, Chairperson, Delhi State IAG, for timely guidance and addressing this event. I extend my sincere thanks to respected discussants for conducting the session beautifully and making the discussion fruitful. I mention my deepest sense of appreciation and heartfelt thanks to all learned speakers. We have been enlightened by your excellent and crisp lectures. I thank all the PG students and delegates for being with us. Last but not the least, I thank my all the colleagues and supportive staff and team of Mr. Shivam. Thank you very much, everyone, for being with us. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you, Chandra. Thank, thank you, Punita. Thank you very thank much. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Bye.